So, today I'm going to be going over my civilian kit for reenactment. So, here I stand in early 13th century gear. This would have been common from about, well really the end of the 12th century until the middle of the 13th century, at which point you start to get things like buttons appearing on clothing. So, my clothes have no buttons, and they're tailored relatively tight up under the arms. This allows me to raise my arms over my head without it pulling on my belt. Sword's not really part of the civilian kit, but I'd include it anyway. It's just, it looks cool. So what the hell. Uh, pouch is not historical, but there's nothing I can do about that. Got this belt. The, uh, it's a Latigo strap from Candy Leather with a with brass, with brass fittings from Lord of Battles. And I thought it looked pretty cool. It, fits with the aesthetic of the time period that I'm going for, so it works. Um, I recently had my tunic altered. Originally, along this seam here, it was this was just the uh, edge of the riding slit and it gapped open. So I had it altered to include these gores that allow it to close uh, when I'm not riding a horse. Now, I also had the lining removed, so you can see it's just a single layer of wool now, as opposed to uh, a lot, having a linen lining. I have this hood, white linen lining, it's a bit dirty, but I can't do anything about that right now. Um, uh, Hosen, these should be tighter on me, actually. I'm going to need to have that altered at some point. But the tailor did as best he could with the measurements I provided. Um, it's not his fault. I just am not good at taking measurements of myself. It would have been better if I could have flown myself over to Poland, but that wasn't actually going to happen. So I'm going to remove my sword belt. The uh, sword belt, by the way, is reasonably historically accurate. This is I made everything except the shape. The shape is a fitting from uh, Todd's workshop of the UK. Now, setting my sword aside for the moment, there's the next bit of gear. And this is a partially sleeved surcot of a type that was common from around the end of the 12th to the mid middle of the 13th century. This particular one is based on an image from the Morgan Bible or Machiawski Bible, however you want to pronounce that. It's um, a Polish Bible from around 1240-1250. It was originally, excuse me, it was originally only done with illustrations, no text. But over time, um, it was passed through various hands and text was added in explanation to the pictures. So the, the verses were added in after the illustrations, which is pretty cool. And the uh, it was owned by Bishop Machiawski of Poland and given to, I think, a Persian em embassy to Poland in the 16th century. So it has text in Latin and Polish in, um, I think in Polish, um, but in, I think, Arabic and Persian as well. And so it's a really cool piece of history just on its own. Um, however, what's important about it is that it, um, the illustrations are all really accurate to the, um, to the material culture of the early to mid 13th century. So, and we know this because we can look at other illustrations of things that depict secular events of the time. And also we can look at artifacts and see that all the illustrations here pretty much match reality, aside from a few items. Uh, these being a couple of uh, chopper style swords that we're not really 100% sure of as far as their historical validity goes. But with that exception, it's really pretty accurate. So. I decided to base my surcot on that. This is sometimes called surcot, sometimes called a guard core. It also should have these extra gores. It doesn't. Somehow the tailor managed to make it look like it did. 
Um, I'm not blaming the tailor for that, actually, because I found an artifact from Spain, a tunic, that was made without those gores. And it's from, like, 1215. So, uh, and it's really quite high status. It's made of this patterned cloth with a bunch of heraldic motifs on it. Uh, and so I'm not really sure whether to be upset that the tailor chose to replicate that or, you know, kind of impressed that he went out of his way to find this one artifact to base his, uh, to base all his stuff on. And it doesn't have the typical writing slit closing doors. And so, yeah, it's, it exists. It's not ahistorical, it's just uncommon. So, if you'll excuse me while I get myself out of this. Settle my hood back into place. Hood can, of course, be raised for cold weather work, whatever. And again, now I have my cloak. Wool with a linen lining. It's been a while since I put this thing on, so give me a second. The black linen lining, I'm not sure of, his, of its historical validity. However, I know black was able to be I once stood out in uh, sub-freezing weather with this. The guy next to me was just wearing modern clothes. I'm wearing this getup. I've just got my cloak wrapped around me. And he's standing there shivering and looking miserable. And I was perfectly warm. You know, it's like I was almost getting a little too warm. And it's, what, five degrees out Fahrenheit. So I don't know what that is in centigrade, but you can look that up. So yeah, that's my uh, civilian kit. Shoes by a Polish company called Prakownia Rico. I think that's how you're supposed to pronounce it. Prakownia is one word, and then Rico, R-E-K-O, which is all caps for some reason. But they're just pretty simple turn shoes. Nothing too special. And then uh, the simple, typical baggy linen undergarments of the time period. So yeah, I need a uh, linen coif tie up under my chin, protect my hair from my hood, that kind of thing, uh, to be a little more accurate to uh, my time period. And there you have it. That is almost the entirety of my civilian kit. I've got a couple of other things, but they're uh, just like eating utensils and stuff. So thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.